I did not mean to imply uh, that our role in the creation of Israel was an, was an undiluted moral triumph. Uh, I think one can take either side of that question, uh, but I think it is a fact of history, and I was simply using it as a, as a, as a preface. Uh, whether the United States and the other, and the other countries involved, namely the large countries in Western Europe, could have done more to, to provide a solution to the refugee question in 1948, I think is a, good, is a good proposition, but there are some doubts about it. Uh, the Arabs, particularly in the period immediately after 1948, used the refugee issue very cynically. They insisted that the only means of restitution uh, would be the reclaiming of the original land, that compensation and resettlement were not enough. And nobody had the power or the moral will to propose the de-establishment of Israel. Well, I'm very sorry that, that uh, I have to answer so briefly such an elaborate question. I don't know. Uh, I, I think that this is, this is, this is one of those uh, inadvertencies or deliberate omissions uh, in, inside an administration of which I was not a part. I, I, I don't know. We're supposed to what? Through the Gulf of Aqaba. Or through the or
Well, let me ask, let, let me try to answer the first question first. Uh, to what extent were we interested in the creation of Israel? Well, there was a very heated debate in this country over a period of months, and the issue finally came to a discussion in the United Nations on the question of the partition of Palestine. And the effect of the partition of Palestine meant the creation of the State of Israel. And the United States delegate to the United Nations was instructed, uh, finally, to cast a favorable vote. Uh, but there was a, a very heated debate in this country on the issue and a number of people who thought it was a very grave mistake. Uh, let me be sure that I understand your second question. You were saying that as a consequence of the 1956 war, the United States guaranteed the right of innocent passage through the Gulf of Aqaba to the ships of all countries, and therefore should have reacted in favor, in support of Israel, when Nasser closed the Strait of Tehran and thus the Gulf of Aqaba in 1967. Well, I think the, uh, there's a technical point here, a legal point, but I think it's a, it's a conclusive one. And that is that we said in 1957 that we would assert for ourselves the right of innocent passage, and we would be glad to give support to others who asserted for themselves the right of innocent passage. But in 1967, uh, there was some talk that, that we should lead an international naval force and, and, and steam up the Gulf. Uh, it was, a, it was a consideration that was later rejected inside the government, in part because we could find no takers to come along with us in Europe. But in fact, I think it, it, would, be, it would be incorrect to assume that we made a commitment to keep the, the Gulf of Aqaba open for Israel in 1957. It wasn't quite as strong as that. Sir. I doubt it. Well, I think there's some partial truth in, in both of them. Uh, there, was, there was, after the British withdrawal from Suez in 1954, and particularly after the 1956 war, what you might call a great power vacuum uh, in the Middle East. That's true. Uh, the Western three powers sought to cover that by, by the so-called tripartite pact which was a, a pledge made by the three of them to hold the inflow of arms to the Middle East at a level sufficient only for the defense of the respective countries, and a pledge to take action, presumably military action, against anyone who chose to alter the boundaries by force. This was a cynical basis for the British-French intervention in 1956. The Soviet Union, as I say, I believe came into the Middle East quite by opportunity and accident in 1955. Once they got there, and since particularly the end of the, of, of the 67 war, when they have come in with their own forces, I think they have required some kind of response on the part of the United States. But 
I just I resist the idea that there was a total vacuum. Uh, I think there was an exclusivity of power on the part of the Western powers until the middle 50s. We had our sixth fleet in the Mediterranean. Uh, the British had, had bases on Cyprus. Uh, there were other evidences of, of Western power, but no Soviet power. And I'm, I'm sure that's not an, a, a satisfactory formulation, but perhaps we can pursue this later. I don't think that, that it's going to play an intermediary role, if that's what you mean. I, I, I see it playing a, a stabilizing role in the Persian Gulf. Now, there is a place where, where there is a, a military vacuum as a consequence of the British withdrawal. And I think that, that Iran certainly hopes to play and probably has the capacity now to play the role of stabilizing power in the Persian Gulf. Where, where are the tunnels? 